Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I will show you a lot of the ring stack that I haven't shared and played yet. It is the Elf's Scry deck. And I can tell you at first I was very skeptical towards the scryability, but it has proven me wrong and it can make a lot of fun in the game. Let's talk about the strength of the deck first. It's incredibly flexible as the scryability allows us to anticipate the cards we will draw or identify the ones we need in specific situations. Another strength lies in the great synergy among the creatures, making it easy to significantly boost their strength, which is the key to winning with this deck. First we make them big and later we crush the opponent with them. Lastly, the creatures are well coordinated. If there are two, three or four creatures on the field, that can trigger a chain reaction. When one creature takes action, it often triggers responses from the others. I will go into this in more detail in the creature section. However, this deck also has this weakness, being a blue-green deck with lack of removal and exile cards. Actually, we do have instant spells that allow two creatures fight or deal damage against each other. The problem is we don't have so many of these, actually only one. The other one I didn't include because it produces a food token and it would not fit into my elf's fiend deck. So let's take a closer look at the creatures in this deck. The cornerstones of this deck are Arven and Elrond. Whenever we scry, Arven distributes a plus one plus one counter on target creature. So it means when we use the ability twice, for example with Elrond, and then also we attack with Lothorian Lookout, we can apply it twice as well. The word whenever makes it really effective. And Elrond is a valuable asset, indeed, not only does he scry when he enters the battlefield, but he also triggers scrying whenever a creature enters the battlefield. So the synergy between Elrond and Arven is indeed impressive, making them a powerful duo in this elf scry deck. Around those two cards we have numerous other great creatures. We have also Lothorian Lookout. This creature is important because whenever this creature attacks, we scry one. It costs only two mana and because of the toughness free, it will not die easily. Our primary goal here is to trigger its scryability and with Arven on the battlefield we can also distribute a counter on when this creature attacks for example. A similar card to consider is Chance Mad Elves and I can't believe that this card is just common because it can escalate very quickly whenever we scry it gets a plus one plus one counter so when we have Elrond and it enters the battlefield it will trigger and it also works very well with Lothorian Lockout. Um, actually, we will scry so often that Arvin doesn't have to enhance it, instead we will enhance other creatures. Um, I also love Galadriel of Lothorian, um, because whenever we scry, we can reveal the top card of our library and if it's a land, we can put it on the battlefield. So we will get faster rid of drawing uh, only lands and we can also cast more spells. And here it's also the whenever that matters. Then we have another version of Elrond. Master of Healing. Whenever we scry, we'll distribute that many counters where X is the number of cards we have looked, but I rather prefer the second ability here whenever a creature we control with a plus one plus one counter on it becomes the target of a spell or ability um, an opponent controls, we may draw a card. So um, yeah, we'll draw more cards and then we also have Nimrodel Watcher. Where is that? Here for two mana. A creature that cannot be blocked when we scry and it gets plus one plus zero. And also we have Elvish Mariner, whenever it attacks we scry one. And then we can also tap creatures whenever we scry. Sorcery. The hidden champ in this deck is definitely the Elfin Farsight. I'm really excited when I have this card at the beginning, because it makes the other turns more predictable and easier for us. We scry three, then we reveal the top card of our library and we can put a creature on the top uh, on our library and we'll draw it. We can shape our next three turns and it's fantastic. Um, in my opinion, underrated also. Um, actually, this is also our only sorcery card here. So let's go over to the instant cards. Here we have Council the Liberation three times. Uh, we can draw a card and whenever we scry, we can exile it from the graveyard and we'll draw an additional card. Then we also have one counter spell, Glorious Gale. Um, yeah, that's it. We have three enchantments. Um, the first one is Lost Isle Calling. Here we have. Uh, whenever we scry, it gets a counter. Then we can pay six mana and for each counter we will draw a card. But if there are more than seven counters, uh, we get an additional turn. Then we have Fall of Gilgalad. This is the only card that we, where we can kill other creatures by letting them um, fight together. First we can scry two, then distribute two counters, and then two selected creatures will fight. And if our creature dies, we draw also a card. 
The last one is Elf and Chorus, we, where we can always look at the top card of our library and we may cast creature spells from the library. In total we have 23 lands because we have Scry and we can easily see what uh, we are going to draw and what we will put under the library. We have 11 islands, we have 10 forests, 1 Rivendell, then we have also the Grey Heavens. This card is awesome because when it enters the battlefield we can Scry one. And then we in the sideboard we have Nimrodel Watcher, Elvish Mariner, Shower of Arrows in case we have to deal with uh, creatures with flying and two copies of that. Then we have Stew the Colonist. Actually I'm not a fan because it creates a food token and Legolas counter of kills. So that is the Elf's Cry deck and I'm really excited to show you how it works. So here we go, we have Aaron, we have Arven and yeah we will play the island first. The only card that we are missing right now is Elfin Farside, but that's fine. As long as we have Elrond, we can also scry whenever we cast him or another creature. So, yeah, it's a huge advantage when we know what card we are going to play. Oh, Elfin Farside we have here. Um, so the question is, uh, shall we cast first Elrond or Elfin Farside? Um, actually, I think we will go for Elrond because we have two copies. Awesome, Galadriel uh, is our next card here, so we can put maybe on Arven the counter, so we can attack, deal 3 damage to the opponent, so yeah, it seems so that the opponent is playing uh, Azorius stack, we can, mm, yeah, actually we need more lands, so what can we do here? The good thing is Nimrodel Watcher can't be blocked. Uh, can't be blocked whenever we scry, so he can get through the defense of the opponent here. So maybe we'll put the counter on Nimrodel Watcher. So now it's a 4-2 creature. Um, yeah, we have to put Nimrodel Watcher on the top so we can draw. And the next two cards are very important for us, especially uh, Grey Heavens. So when this land enters that battlefield, we can scry here. So we can attack with Arven for damage to the opponent. And also with Galadriel, we can just get rid of all the lands that we have here because then we can uh, play them from the top of the library and we can draw non-land cards. Wow, an alchemy card? Enchantment, create a 2-2 and blue detective creature. Yeah, detective is a new type. They, they uh, I think with the new set, they just um, established this new type, detective, with Carl of Manor. So, yeah. We are playing against the detective deck. Interesting. So Nimrodel is a 5-3 creature. Yeah, we can reveal, we can put it on the ba on the battlefield and also Grey Heavens. So this will be a lot of damage. On the Scry 2, awesome. And we can also deal damage to the opponent's creature by casting Fall of Gilgalad. No, no, reveal the top, no we don't have to. It's not the la land, but we can attack. So 6 damage, looks pretty good for us. And we have another copy of the Nimrodel Watcher on the hand. Wow, they are enhancing all oh, they are enhancing all the detectives. Awesome. Yeah, it's a very interesting type. Private eye. And then you have also tokens that that share the detective type here. So I think we have to go with Nimrodel Watcher in case they will kill it. So we have another one that can attack the opponent without being blocked. Elvish Mariner. I think, yeah, we have to keep that also because whenever we scry, we can tap our opponent's creatures. So... Yeah, we can reveal... Ah, no, I mean, we don't have to... But wait, this way I put it on the battlefield. Yeah, only if a land card is revealed. But... There is another ability of uh, Galadriel. It says when someone is uh, getting our ring bearer besides Galadriel, 
We can scry free also. So Nibrondel is now an 8-6 creature. I think we have to attack with... Mm, I mean, they have three creatures. They are not that, right? Yeah, they can block Elrond, Arven, and Galadriel. So I think we'll just keep that. And we still have two Nibrodel Watchers on the battlefield. I think if they are not doing anything next turn, they are dead. Otherwise, they would just block everyone. Arven, Elrond, and Galadriel. All of our creatures would be dead. Destroy target creature with power 4 or greater. Draw a card. Also enhancing their creatures. Ah. Whenever you draw your second card, each turn target detective can be blocked. Ooh, that will be a lot of damage. Oh. Can we survive that? Yeah, I think it's possible. We have to block also the private eye here. It will be 10 damage. Okay, GG. Very interesting deck. So, we start the game. We have Elrond, we have Elven Farsight. I'm always excited when we have Elven Farsight. At the beginning, it makes the game such easier. Uh, yeah, then we can start by casting this sorcery spell, Elven Farsight. Ooh, ah, okay. At least we have one creature type here. But I think... Mm, I mean... We need the other Elfin Farsight here. Actually, it was a very dumb move because we should have taken the Elvish Mariner. Anyway. Lothorian Lookout or another Elfin Farsight. Yeah. We need more lands, right? And we need the island. The island is very important here. It's only, yeah, we don't have actually, only Elrond is our only legendary creature that shares blue. Uh, but yeah, first this card must be in the graveyard so we can um, benefit from Grey Heavens. Lothorian Lookout, Chance Mad Elves first. And let's see, then we can cast also Lothorian. Yeah, actually I made so many mistakes. It should be Lothorian Lookout first. So, the next turn we could cast Chance Mad Elves and we could attack with Lothorian Lookout. So it would already be enhanced then. Anyway, we have to be flexible here. Ah, uh, Glorious Gale? Nah, we don't need that. I mean, we still need one island here. We can attack. Juan Carlos GI so that's a, also a very good combination Lothurian Lookout with Chance Mad Elves the look has a very uh, very good toughness oh we are I think we are playing against the soldier deck here so Elrond no more forest and then we can attack with both creatures and hence ch chance mad elves another time five damage awesome so yeah this is a flying creature and we have some uh, real struggles with flying creatures we have n i mean none of the elves uh, has reach only legolas i think but this creature is our side deck so mm, yeah, but I also put in the side deck the... Um, wh what's the name of the card? Um, something with with the... Yeah, Shower of Arrows is the card where you can decide either to destroy an enchantment, an artifact or a creature with flying. So, uh, we have Aaron, that's the most important, so we can... Sc oh, awesome, we have Galadriel. So, let's cast this creature, so we can put more lands on the battlefield. Yeah, I think it's not bad to have another island. The Nimrodel Watcher, nah, it's too weak. 
so we will just put it under the library i think we should need we need arvin arvin is the perfect asset here aileron oh, master of healing do we need that i mean let's attack first also another chance met us is would be great i think let's put it under the library and I assume that our opponent has a lot of also uh, some uh, counter spells in Rudel Watcher. So I think they would rather use that. Sapphire Sentinel. Yeah, that's the classic soldier deck from Brothers War. I mean, I'm still working on it, but yeah, I still need more wild cards. But I think only four or five I need. So then the deck is completed. Yeah, I mean, Brothers War also contains some awesome cards, especially when you want to make a soldier deck. I mean, in this case, it's very easy to make also a block deck because, yeah, you have so many great soldier cards. Also, Muriel, like the Muriel Shield of Argive. Whenever you attack, you, produ you produce more t uh, soldier tokens. Also a great card. Yeah, Council's Deliberation. I mean, whenever we scry, we can also exile it from the graveyard and we will draw another uh, card. Elrond? Nah. I mean, our opponent doesn't kill our creatures here, so we don't have to fear that. And let's attack with those creatures. Council's Deliberation. Mm. Yeah, I, f I just really want Arvin. And we can only cast one card. We still need the island. So I think next turn we will just cast Council Council's Deliberation together with Fall of Gilgalad. And then when we attack, for example, we can draw another card. We need to make some pressure on the opponent. Ah, Muriel, Shield of Argif. Excellent. Yeah, that's the card. Very essential in this soldier deck. And Survivor of Cardis with First Strike also. So, yeah, Fall of Gilgalad first. Let's cry. Yeah, finally. Island and Arvin. Um, so first the island. We can put it. Then we can also use Council's Deliberation, draw Arvin. Here we go. We'll draw it. And then... Yeah, we can attack with the Nibrodel Watcher. So, free damage to the opponent. Yeah, they are not able to block. They just realized it. Actually, they wanted to use Survivor of Carlis with first strike. Oh, yeah, you can tap for each soldiers and you will draw in a card. But I think that's it. If they are not able to kill Nimrodel Watcher right now, they are dead. Because I think that's possible, right? Um, we will put two counters on the Watcher. And also we will attack with the Lothorian look Lookout. So, so when this creature attacks, the, uh, uh, the, the, lookout, the Lookout will scry. And... Therefore, the Nimrodel Watcher will be not... The opponent is not able to block this creature. Oh, wow. What a move. Awesome. It's a, that's a lot of damage also. So, and they have a lot... A big soldier army here. So, we will put two counters on it. We can attack. Yeah, this land looks good, despite of not having Arvin, Elrond or uh, Elfin Farsight, but that's fine. We have Chance Mad Elves, 
Also Galadriel, so we can also put some lands on the battlefield. Elvish Mariner, nice. Yeah, I think, yeah, that works. Also at the end of our opponent's turn we can cast Council of Deliberation. Or yet, Call of the Ring. Oh, but I can't imagine that they are going to cast Nazgul's in a blue-black deck together with Call of the Ring, but oh, I'm very I'm very curious what it might be. Let's see, Call of the Ring. Are there any Nazgul's? Oh, they are playing Nazgul's in this deck. Wow, very strange. A black-blue Nazgul deck. I have never seen that. I mean, what else can you add in uh, to this stack? I mean, thematically, Mouth of Sauron, maybe, but the problem is it has the mass ability, so it won't work in this stack. I mean, I can imagine that there might be also a white, white, black, Frodo, no, Sauron, Nazgul deck. That is possible, but a blue, black, wow. Well, let's see what their opponent has for us here. We can tap it, um, we can put the counter on the Elvish Mariner. Yeah, of course, we will exile it, draw another card. Yeah, the good thing is, whenever we scry, we can tap them. Even though they have death touch, they will not be able to block them. Shieldred, ah. Uh, yeah, makes sense in this stack. Whenever they draw together, I mean, Shieldred together with Call of the Ring is a very good combination. So you will lose two life points, but whenever you draw this card, Shieldred gives you two life points again. So let's attack. I think, yeah, we will attack with the Mariner. So we will put one counter on it. And we will tap the Nazgul, I would say. Because we want to kill Shieldred. I think it's a bigger threat here. And the only card that we need is Fall of Gilgalad, so we can also get rid of Shieldred then. But we have only three copies in the stack. Ah, they are drawing too many cards. And I bet they have also uh, several removal cards here. So, hmm. So let's see. Council's deliberation again. I think we have to put Galadriel on the battlefield. Also, Lost Isle Calling. Yeah, we have already enough mana, right? We have six. So we can also exile it, and for each counter on uh, Lost Isle Calling, we will draw a card. I'm just thinking, or maybe Council Deliberation, but we can also do that later. So let's attack with the Elvish Mariner and Chance Madhouse. Actually, also with the Lookout, so we can scry another time, and we can put more counters, because Elrond says whenever... We scry, we can just put it. And, wait, yeah, and we are scrying, of course, twice. Once because of the Elvish Mariner and then because of the Lookout. So we can tap both creatures. Uh, no, that's not a land. But here we can tap also Shieldred. Awesome. Totally forgot about that. Yeah, GG. So we start with Arund, we have also Arven, perfect. So we can put first the forest. I'm just programmed like that because of Elfin Farsight, it's always the forest first here. So next turn we can already cast Arven. Is it a soldier deck? Let's see. Yeah, soldier decks are very popular among the, uh, the current decks here. I can see like like every third deck um, is about soldiers, yeah it is. Valiant Veteran, of course also very uh, very important in this deck, which enhances all the other soldiers by one, plus one plus one. So Elrond, 
let's see if our creatures can get bigger than our opponents because you have also an enchantment that gives like plus one plus one to all your creatures in the set from brothers war i forgot the name but yeah it's an enchantment and also you have for example the uh, the two color soldier card i think it costs three or four which gives all the other uh, soldiers also plus one plus one so you have several um cards to boost your soldier army galadriel first i guess so we can put the lands on the battlefield hopefully they are not going to kill or exile elrond so oh miriel yeah of course also an essential card in the stack Mirror Shield of Argive. So I don't believe they are going to attack, yes. So we'll put more counters on Elrond. And yeah, Galadriel of Lothorian. Do we yeah, I hmm, it's difficult. Actually, we'll just put it under the library. And we'll reveal, yeah, nice, it's a land. So fall of Gilgalad, maybe we we have to cast this also, so in case they're going to kill Elrond, we can also put some counters on Galadriel. And next turn, Galadriel could also fight against the Valiant Veteran, because we always have to keep in mind that uh, we all it deals also damage to our creature, so it might be um, also dead if they have, for example, any other instant spells. So, until end of turn, target creature you control gains when this creature dies, draw two cards and it fights against uh, one of our opponent's creatures. So, yeah, we'll put counters on Galadriel, so we'll balance this a little bit more. And also chance mad elves. Nimrodel Watcher, hmm. Do we need that? Um, it's a creature, but... I mean, it's just 2-1. I think we'll just put it on the on, on the uh, under the library. Here we have another copy of Galadriel. So let's let's attack only with Galadriel. Five damage. Yeah, we need at least seven or more verse counters on it to take an extra turn I mean we already have four so we can which creature we have to destroy I think it has to be the valiant veteran because it pumps up all the other soldiers here so Galadriel fights against the valiant veteran now they are much weaker all the creatures are right now only one one creatures Hmm, actually I really want to draw four cards also. So first we are atta we will attack with Elrond and yeah, we can attack with all of these. We have another copy of Galadriel on our hand. Oh, they're focusing all on Elrond. Nice. I didn't expect that, to be honest. I thought they will just block with three. Uh, creatures Galadriel. Activate only as a sorcery. Hmm. I mean, if, then we have to do it right now. I think we can do that. And we have another copy of Galadriel. Hmm. Yeah, the problem is maybe... I, I don't think we have to cut off one copy. I mean, Galadriel is very efficient here. The problem is sometimes the Shuffler is just giving you all the same cards here. So, the Forest. Then we might cast Elrond GG. Yeah. So, opponent goes first. And what do we have here? Elf and Farsight, perfect. Turn 3, Elrond, Lord of Rivendell. Yeah, let's do that. Hunt of Dead Marshes, awesome, one of the uh, Lot of the Rings cards. 
Well, I didn't play against a block deck for a while. Hopefully they have some more Lot of the Rings cards. So Galadriel, Lothorian, yeah, we'll take the Nimrodel Watcher first. It's a creature with two mana. So we can cast it next turn. Hound of the Dead Marshes. Call of the Ring, wow. Maybe they have a block deck. So then maybe also some Nazgul's in the stack. At the beginning of your upkeep, sure. The ring tempts you, you can pay two life, they will draw a card. Golem Patient Plotter, awesome combination, I haven't seen that also. Like a, a black red Call of the Ring tag. Elrond, yeah, is just too expensive right now. We have also Elfin Chorus that we want to use. And yeah, we don't need a second copy of Elrond Master of Healing. Call of the Ring. That might be a problem because when they reach level 4 of that, they will deal with one creature, with the 1-1 one, one creature, for damage. Because of the ring uh, ability also. Mount Doom. They have indeed only a lot of the rings cards. Awesome. So. Column Patient Plotter. Nah, they are not going to attack with that. I mean, we ha we can also block with the Watcher. That's not a problem. I mean, free damage is just too much. They draw a card, they have to discard. So, yeah. We block Gollum. And the ring tempts you if this creature leaves the battlefield. Rivendell? Hmm. Yeah, I think we will go with Galadriel. No. We will scry, reveal. Mm, not a land, unfortunately. So let's put Rivendell on the battlefield and we can attack. I mean, we are, we are not able to block. So that will be a lot of damage. Four damage. Let's see if they are going to pay to life. Let's see, I, I mean, 13 lev, uh, life points is also not mu not much. And then if you are going to attack with both creatures, it's 6 damage, Elrond and Galadriel. Rohirrim Lancer, interesting. And here we have another copy of Hound of the Dead Marshes. Scry 1. Yeah, it's all about the Ring Tempts You ability. I think it has to be very quick, the deck, if you're uh, playing Call of the Ring and Rohirrim Lancer, all the, all the focus is on the Ring Temptation ability. You want to get as fast as possible um, to level 4, so you can benefit from all those abilities, like uh, you draw a card, then discard, and also uh, it deals 3 additional damage cannot be blocked by creatures with firepower. Mm, yeah, Nimrodel Watcher. I think we have to go with the fall of Gilgalad. The only disadvantage with Galadriel is that <laughs> the land is coming tapped on the battlefield. So, fall of Gilgalad. We can also scry. Elfin Farsight. Nah, we don't need that. We have already enough. Yeah, Arvin, we will keep that. Oh, with Council's Deliberation. Uh, yeah, we can also draw Gar uh, Arvin in this case. And then we will attack with both creatures. So we have to stop the opponent to taking advantage of Call of the Ring. Down to 8. Call of the Ring. Yeah, 
I don't think they are sacrificing two more life points here. But very cool that we are also playing against a lot of the rings decks deck. It's not that often this time. I mean, when this set came out, it was very, very usual to play against a lot of lot of drinks uh, decks, especially against the Nazgul decks. But yeah, unfortunately, there are not that many anymore. So Hound of the Dead Marshes. Yeah. But very interesting concept of this deck. Yeah, I, there is another deck that I want to make from Lord of the Rings. It's the uh, Celestia deck with Arvin and together with um, Aragorn. And also with Frodo. I saw a very cool combination uh, where you can distribute an indestructible counter, also I think other counters, and that worked very well, surprisingly. So I think I will do that, um, yeah, that will, will be the next deck that I will uh, try to create. Hound of the Dead Marshes, yeah, for damage. We don't have, uh, the only creature that we have here in this deck is the Lookout. So this creature is the only one who is able to block Hound of the Dead Marshes. So we have to wait. Let's see, they don't want to attack. Yeah, the problem is they, they ran out of mana. So we can put on the Nimrodel Watcher, make it a 4 creature, uh, four free creature. We'll draw a card. We can cast Arven. And we still have free mana. Hmm. Or maybe Elrond. I think Elrond is more effective, so we can distribute counters on the uh, Nimero del Watcher. Yeah, let's see if we can reach that. 6-4. No. Yeah, we can draw an additional card here. So yeah, let's attack with all the creatures. They have to block with all the creatures here. And also Galadriel, others, uh, yeah, they have to. So six damage. Yeah, it's not possible to block the Watcher. Down to six. So they have only one life point and yeah, it looks pretty good for us. We have three creatures on the battlefield so actually this should be enough let's see what the opponent is going to do and then yeah we have also elfin chorus so we can also uh, play cards from our library and chance mad elves so let's see Dunland Craybine. okay so they have three creatures but if we if we are going to scry um they are not able to block nimrod the watcher so also, they have only one mana left. I think, yeah, that should, that should it be. So, GG. So, here we go. We start the game, but this hand looks a little bit too risky. We have only two lands, one basic and the other one is Grey Heavens. So, I think because we need um, at least two basic lands, I think we can keep that. Also, because we have Elf and Farsight, so we can scry free and hopefully we'll... Um, see more lands. So yeah, turn one, Elf and Farsight. Great, we have also a creature, so we'll put it on the on the top here. And yeah, it's Elrond. A great card, so turn three. We can play Elrond, turn two, Arven. So yeah, we can also start then scrying and also distributing some, distributing some counters with Arven. So that's actually a pretty good start right now, even with the Mulligan. So yeah, Elf and Farsight can have such a big impact here. So we are playing 
against the Izzet deck, I guess. Yeah, I think so. The opponent has only two colors. And yeah, we have also Glory Scale. So, Fall of Gilgalad for two mana, one card from Dominaria. So, we will cast Elrond and we can scry. Um, do we need more forests? Actually, mm, we have already three, so I think we can put it under the library and we can then distribute one counter on Elrond. So, and we can also start attacking. Two damage for the opponent. And next turn, yeah. I think we will go for Fall of Gilgalad. Let's see what creature our opponent is going to cast. Meeting of Minds, Convoke, draw two cards. Elven Farset again, great. So this changed the, everything. Oh, great, we have Galadriel. So let's put it on the top. And yeah, then we have the Holy Trio. Arvin, Elrond and Galadriel. So every one of them will trigger their ability. As soon as Galadriel will enter the battlefield, so then Elrond will scry. We can distribute one counter with Arvin, and also we can then, um, we, yeah, what a brusque, we have to counter this spell. And because it's a legendary creature, we can all the ring tempts us. So, island, we will cast Galadriel for Florian, and yeah, the land we can put uh, instantly on the battlefield. Distribute one counter, maybe on Galadriel. So yeah, that's the holy trio. Arvin, Elrond and Galadriel. So down to five. Yeah, I mean you feel so mighty if you have them on the battlefield. Sure, they can destroy Elrond. Oh, they're attacking, okay. So, Elvish Mariner. Um, yeah, we can cast this creature, then we'll cast also Fall of Gilgalad. Scry 2. Then we can tap two creatures. And th and that's it, I, I think, yeah. We can tap two. Those tokens here, and yeah, we'll put a counter on Arven and that's it. So GG. So this time opponent starts the game. Um, yeah we have the Watcher turn 2, Elrond turn 3 and ah we are playing against the Boros deck so mm, let's see actually I want to I wanted to cast the Watcher first but um, I think I will do it the other way around, so I will not cast Watcher right now. We have Glorious Gale, so we can counter a creature spell, Fear Inscription. So in this case we will use Council's Deliberation, draw a card. So Island or Rivendell first, it, can, it comes tapped on the battlefield, so yeah. I don't want to waste any creatures right now, for, yeah, I bet the opponent has several burn spells. Forest, and yeah, let's cast Watcher first in case they want to kill it. I mean, I'd rather uh, lose the Watcher than, for example, Elrond or Chance Mad Elves. Virtue of Loyalty. A very strong card, yeah. I mean, for 5 mana, every turn you can pump up your creatures by giving them plus 1, plus 1. And, yeah, an awesome card here. So, Nimrodel Watcher. Let's see, shall we block? Mm, yeah, I think we will just block this creature. I mean, we have to prevent any, uh, any damage from the opponent right now, because... Uh, um, Every time they are casting a sorcery instant spell, right? It deals um, two damage to us by fear inscription. 
so Galadriel, I think, yeah, we have another copy, so we can also scry right now, and then we will just put as many lands we can on the battlefield then. Yeah, we'll draw first Elrond, and the good thing is, every creature that has a plus one plus one counter um, becomes the target of the opponent's spell, and uh, at the same time when we have Elrond Master of Healing at the battlefield, so yeah, it targets our creature, we will draw a card, because yeah, that's the ability of Elrond, and yeah, another burn spell. I mean, the good thing is the opponent only has three lands on the battlefield, so they cannot use all of the of their spells here. Yeah, Elrond, Lord of Rivendell. Let's put it on the battlefield and then we can... Yeah, Island is good. So now we will cast Galadriel, put the Island on the battlefield. Yeah, we have a big advantage right now. Reveal. So, um, Fall of Gilgalad, maybe the third, Nimrodel the second, Island the first. So the island we can just put it right now on the battlefield. Yeah, it's, it's so effective, the ability of Galadriel. And yeah, they are just stuck with free lands. Let's see if they have even more burn spells for us. Yeah, and I'm really excited because recently I just ordered all uh, um, all the cards for the scenery um, picture of Lord of the Rings. If you remember, um, there's a huge scenery um, that contains 16 cards and I really want to uh, gather all of them. So I have ordered yeah, I just blocked with Elrond because, as you can see, our opponent has so many burn spells and they can also target us, so we have to avoid any damage. And yeah, I have ordered uh, all the scenery cards from Lord of the Rings, I really want to collect them. And yeah, and then I will show you my collection, and uh, yeah, it will, look, it will look awesome, I bet. When you have the full collection of those, you can see the... the Battlefield of the Pelennor fields there. Yeah, we have a big advantage. We can cast so many cards right now at once. Forest. Arvin is more important. Yeah. Ah, yeah, we can also tap any permanent of the opponent. So let's tap the Fear Inscription distribute some counters on the other creatures here and Nibrundel Watcher yeah, we can keep that for now and even distribute more counters so down to 11 Maybe the opponent has... Is there any um, any sorcery, inst uh, sorcery or instant spell where you can just wipe out the whole battlefield for 4 mana? Um, I'm not sure. But yeah, we don't have to take the risk. We still have also... The next card that we are going to draw is Arven. Um, Watcher is also very useful. Whenever we scry, it cannot be blocked by the opponent. So we'll distribute maybe on the Elvish Mariner. Let's see if they're going to kill this creature. And I think that's it. Yeah, the problem is the opponent... Um, yeah, they didn't draw that many lands. Maybe some of their spells are very, um, very expensive also, and they cost more than 3 mana. Exile target to attack and creature, sure. Yeah, boah, Fear Inscription, if they would have even a, like, a third copy, it would be lethal for us. So we can also scry. 
forest uh, we'll just put it under the library and yeah let's tap the fear inscription and, and dive yeah that's it it was actually close we are down to six if they would aim f maybe for us directly with the instance spells we might be dead but yeah gg so yeah gg so yeah that's a very decent hand we have here we have two forests one island also arvan at the beginning great so also elvish mariner whenever we scry we can just tap opponent's creatures so maybe hmm our opponent is playing an orzov deck so we can expect some removal cards here also okay so th we have to get rid of this creature um, otherwise they will draw um, a lot of cards so maybe we'll just cast elvish mariner so we can block at least with this creature hopefully they will not kill it oh maybe they're just aiming for arvin great better than than for elvish mariner so here we can at least block or maybe they have another removal card plane cycling a Phyrexian deck interesting the other one is also a uh, depiction of the Phyrexian. Yeah, now they have... they just ran out of mana. They don't have anything they can... Oh, they are attacking us. So in this case we are going to block and kill. I mean, it's a perfect trade. So now we can cast Elrond. And we still have one mana open. Here we have another copy of Arven Great. So we can also draw it. All of Florian Lookout. Yeah, I think we'll just... Maybe we'll just pick the, the Lookout first here. Yeah, Phyrexian creatures. Only a Phyrexian creatures here. Also the... Icor Drinker with Lifelink 1-1 one, one creature. Yeah, actually we can also cast two, uh, two creatures at once. Yeah, all the Phyrexians you control um, get plus one plus one. So it, it enhances them. Yeah, we'll keep that. I think um, they will always target Harvin first. So I think it's better to have other copies of that card. The Florian Lookout. Yeah, we will just pick... Mm, who? Maybe... Yeah, maybe Elrond. And we can just put a counter on the lookout here. So, yeah, that's our perfect blocker. Yeah, it's cool also to play against other tribal decks. Here it's the Phyrexian deck. Yeah, oh, Phyrexian Vampire. Interesting combination. And yeah, they can also produce those incubator tokens where you can just transform them. Now it's a free free token creature. And so yeah, they didn't attack us. Elvish Mariner. Mm, maybe counts as deliberation, so we can uh, fall of Gilgalad. I was hoping for another island. So yeah, here we have the island, the forest we can just put on the, the library. And yeah, we'll distribute more counters. 
Looks pretty good for us. We can also exile. Council's deliberation, draw the island. And... Shall we attack? Hmm. Yeah, with the lookout we can attack. Let's see if they are going to block with both creatures. Now we have to... Yeah, we can cast Galadriel later. Let's see, they didn't block. And next turn, we can also tap the Drinker when we cast a creature spell. And also when we... If they are going to cast any other creatures, we can also tap that. Because look out, whenever this creature attacks, we can also scry. Galadriel, the Holy Trinity. We'll keep that because Grey Heavens also contains the scry ability. Oh yeah, and it comes also on the battlefield directly. Awesome. So... Also we can scry. Put more counters on the creatures. And now we can even cast the Elvish Mariner. Wow, a great turn. So many creatures, let's see. We'll pick the lookout, so also Galadriel will activate her ability. And we can scry free, because we um, picked any other creatures uh, creature than Galadriel. I mean, look at that elf's army. Wow. Awesome. So many elves. Actually, that's my first... No, uh, no, it's not my first elf stack. The first was from Kaltheim that I created. This is my second elf stack. But I, I mean, those elves are also huge. 7, 6, 5, 7, 4, 4. We'll discard Arvin. So, if they are not... Yeah. They will kill... Uh, Arvin. So, down to 3. But yeah, I'm very optimistic. I think that's it. I think if they cannot wipe out the whole battlefield, they are dead. So... Scout with perfection. Yeah, they have only two creatures on the battlefield, so that's it. Yeah, GG. Uh, I really like to play with the elf stack. I mean, the scry ability is a very underrated um, ability. Also, it ha can have, s I mean, such an impact on the on the whole game, because you always know, like, for the next three three turns, what you are going to draw, and yeah, that's why it can have a big impact. So yeah, I'm very satisfied with the stack. Also, you can see if we have Elrond, Arven, and also Galadriel on the battlefield. I mean, it's a yeah, this trio is just amazing. Um, you can distribute counters, you can scry, you can also put lands on the directly from the from your library to the battlefield. Um, yeah, so I really I underestimated actually the elves in this set, but yeah. It has proven me, proven me wrong, and yeah, I'm really glad that I also tested it out. Um, in future I will maybe s do some adjustments here, and I will just do some other experiments with this stack. So, if you like my format, I'm just creating decks from one certain set. Um, yeah, please subscribe, um, leave a comment, and see you next time. Bye bye.